Hello YouTube, it's Eternal Frost here. Uh, coming at you with some more Vermintide 2. I thought I'd go ahead and do some class overviews and uh, to supplement some of the tomes and grim runs that I've been doing. Um, I know I've kind of gone through um, Barden for the most part, um, but I do have I don't have anything unlocked for Salt Spark because I've been kind of saving him for last. But uh, I thought I'd kind of go through an overview of my thoughts of all the classes. So um, let's kind of just play around in the courtyard here and uh, give you an idea of what I think. Um, all right, so Marcus Kruber. He starts out with the mercenary class, right? Uh, mercenary being a pretty much all-around um, just versatile class. Uh, his passive ability basically means that if you hit more than three opponents in a single hit, you get increased attack speed. Um, a lot of his talents are then also based around that activation so that that can be shared with other characters or you get different or increased bonuses. He also gets the ability to penetrate through more opponents at once and uh, as you can see here he has an increased crit chance. His active ability allows everyone to gain a stack of some temporary health, that's that gray or rather white glowing health and uh, will also stagger everyone in a 360 degree radius around him um, about as far as where this guy is now standing so it does help clear hordes to help people pick people up um, the temporary health does not go above your maximum health so again this is a good all-around class and in fact I would recommend for any new player to Vermintide 2 to start with Marcus uh, Marcus does start with a two-handed sword um, which, as you can see from the tooltips here, they've really changed, or given you an idea of what the weapons are good for, right? So the uh, two-handed sword here, which I actually don't have a magical one, go imagine that, is uh, right there. And, oh, here it is. And you see it has high damage, wide sweeps, crowd control. It is very good at crowd control, and I want to stress that when you start to play the game, after you've played the tutorial, not only should you be focused on really knowing when to use uh, charge strikes, like I just did there, uh, and when to use regular strikes, which I did there, but also when to use the shove and the follow-up repost, like I just did right there. So, to do a shove, you want to hold your block and click your attack button. So, that's it. Just hold the block, click attack. Now, if you hold your attack, notice that it does consume a stamina shield. If you hold your attack, you'll do a follow-up swing. Some classes will also do, or will do a stab instead, so a single target high AP. In this case, most of the weapons will do a sweep, as uh, you'll find yourself shoving, and this is where stamina management is very important. Um, you'll find yourself shoving if you think you're getting overwhelmed, and by overwhelmed that means not being able to dodge or block enough attacks all at once. Like if there's a big enough horde where you're going to lose your shields, every time you block you lose some of those shields, that's stamina. You might want to, instead of say, taking up three shields of blocking, shove. Buy yourself some space at the cost of one shield, and that can give you your time, your stamina time to regenerate. Uh, my crew has some increased stamina regen, so it, it comes back a lot sooner than uh, regular. But uh, there, like, the time that you bought can either buy you space to move, most importantly, space to throw grenades, um, and again, it will also allow you to get a stab in. It's really good for cases where you're trying to, again, keep momentum. The worst thing in this game is to get trapped by things, right? So keep momentum with the shove. Um, if you're pressing forward, you want to do the shove slap. If you're, if you have one of the rare weapons that does a shove stab, that's great for getting through uh, shielded foes, for example. You shove, they drop their shield, you hit them. That's a hit scored, not on their shield, but on that opponent. Um, if it's an AP hit, that's even better. So anyway, I've changed, I've moved his over to the sword and shield. Um, as this is a very versatile weapon, right? So this is good for all of Kruber's classes, as far as I'm concerned. Um, first of all, you've got a lot of shield. You get a lot of stamina with the shield. Great at um, blocking. One thing about blocking is that you'll notice in the inventory, next to the stamina number, it says uh, it has a little icon of a shield with like a blue arc above it. That arc, that's that zone. If you're blocking in that zone in front of you, you're going to be blocking with reduced stamina. As in, you won't consume as much stamina if you're blocking an attack in that direction. So as you can see here, his best one is his mason shield. Basically, if he's blocking within 180 degrees in front of him, he's going to be... he's not going to lose as much stamina on those blocks. He can still block behind him. He can always block behind you, 
or outside of that arc that you see there. If you do, you're going to be consuming more stamina per block. So the more people hitting you from behind, the quicker you lose that stamina. And I love this sword and shield because on the first charged attack, you'll see the hit is a wide sweeping hit. So this is low damage, but it can buy you time just like a shove. So, and you'll see there, I just did a repost on accident. Um, it's a shove followed by a stab, which is really great, again, for those armored opponents. Um, but yeah, so the charge attack will buy you some time. And you should also familiarize yourself, and I like the sword and shield, some people might not. But familiar yourself with the attack patterns. Here, you ha your charge attacks are a wide sweep, followed by an AP stab, followed by another wide sweep. So, know when to... S know when to use your second or third strikes, or simply stop attacking, hold block to reset your um, your combo, and then you can spam your... Um, whoops, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> you can spam your uh, charge attacks. So if I really need to clear... There you go. What I'm doing is block canceling. So when you're when you're fighting, like if you're in mid-swing, but you need to stop, hit block, you'll stop your swing. That's really good for charge attacks like that. I just canceled my charge attack. If I don't think I have enough time to hit something, and I'm going to be hit by something fast, always hit block. Worst case, you don't do a block cancel, you get hit. Best case, you interrupt your own attack, and you do not take damage, which is vital in this game. So get used to the way your weapons work. Notice how these attacks are wide sweeps, which is good for, again, clearing cloud and crowd control. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but the point for Kruber is his durability. He'll be able to tank out a lot of attacks, hold up hordes and positions, and be able to slowly deal damage over time. And when, it, when the worst comes to worst, if he does get too swamped or someone needs help, a good yell, everybody falls around you, and now you have temporary health. So he's got a good spammable, spammable active. And so the way I use my Kruber with my Mercenary is, again, for that jack-of-all-trades kind of deal. Um, I gave him the Repeater mostly because it is also a good kind of jack-of-all-trades weapon. Um, it's got plenty of ammo, does decent damage, can get headshots. The only thing that you don't get is that uh, you don't get a zoom. What you do get is a lot of rapid-fire shots. So if you hold down the charge button, it starts spinning. You can hold down the attack button and let loose. It's not very good at clearing hordes, which is kind of weird. I believe it does say, like, crowd control or something on it. Um, oh, rapid fire, that's what it says. Shield breaking, versatile. So again, versatile weapon, but not very good at clearing hordes. Again, you're going to want to tank out hordes with a trusty sword and shield. His next class... Oh, let me actually review the talents before I move forward. His talents here, as you can kind of see, um, level 5 is going to be increased stamina regeneration, uh, critical hit chance, and healing effects. And everyone has different kind of flavors here for the most part. Their levels 5 and 10 are mostly a mix of the same things, um, and you will be able to pick a set of those things. His level 10s, he can get increased power for being surrounded, and here I've done that because I expect him to be surrounded. Um, I didn't want to do the reduced damage taken because, again, this, this depends on you being below health. And higher difficulties, if you're that low on health, you're going to go down anyway. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of useless at higher difficulties. Shark it off. That does uh, attack interruption time. Um, again, I, I don't find you, you should be trying to avoid hits, not mitigating being hit, if that makes sense. So you'll see here um, the stamina regeneration is again to restore stamina so that I can block more often and so I can deal more damage when I'm surrounded. For his level 15s, most of the level 15s you'll start to see. Um, class group skills where they start to spread their passives with their group and the bots will share their passives with you so this is pretty important so for um for the mercenary class for Kruber, you see that he can increase power by 10% when pace strikes is active. So when you hit more than three people, not only do you get that increased attack speed, but you also get increased power, which is damage um, to your opponents. Your blade barrier will reduce damage when you've got pace strikes, act strikes active. And again, my, my view on this is you want to avoid damage altogether, not reduce damage already taken. And then, of course, um, here with, with this pace with a strike together, your pace strikes is shared. So if he ever triggers that pace strikes, even as a bot, your friends will get that. So by equipping this and leaving Marcus as a bot, as a, um, as a mercenary, he'll be able to share this ability with me if I'm going solo. Um, level 20 skills are the same for all the classes. So all the level 20 skills are basically granting temporary health on crit or kill, 
and then uh, gaining permanent health when you've killed the boss. Bosses like ogres, trolls, that sort of things. Um, and then f your final 25 is going to be based on your active skill, right? So here you're reducing cooldown, here you're getting an increase in the temporary amount of health, and then finally, this does n uh, revive knockdown allies, which can be pretty powerful, I imagine, on some of the um, higher difficulties, where if everyone's gone down, a quick pop, and bam, everybody's up again. That can be quite powerful. Um, that's probably what I'll do if I ever run with uh, Kruber in higher level runs. More than likely. You never know. We'll see how it runs out. But uh, yeah, the 20s and 25s are pretty... The, actually, these are all pretty predictable. F levels 15, 20, and 25 for all the characters. In 15, you're going to start sh sharing your uh, skills. Level 20 is always going to be um, temporary health on crit kill. And then finally, for level 25, it's going to affect your active. So for Kruber, I've fully kitted him out for maximum versatility for the mercenary. Moving on to his next class, we have his Huntsman. And I first started playing this class, and I thought it was really annoying, right? Because it's like, here's Kruber, a great tank, and you're moving him into a support slash ranged role, which didn't quite sit well with me. Um... And then I gave in, and I just gave him the Sword and Shield. And just as is Marcus before, that Sword and Shield does its same purpose. Now I switched out his weapon with the handgun, and the handgun I really like, as it has good range, that zoom-in is pretty nice, the snap is a bit slow, so you want to make sure that you get full snap before shooting. So take your time on shots. I mean, don't sit there and be like, you know, do be do be do be do I mean, like, know that you can... Uh, know when that thing snaps fully, bam, fire. Know when that snaps fully, bam, fire, right? Wait for the that snap before you shoot. Uh, you'll find that the spread, if you don't wait, you can easily miss. Like, watch, I'll shoot before that thing collapses, and I'll likely miss the target, even though my um, pinpoint is right on the head. Well, I was too close for that one. Let's move further back where that is the size of the reticle snap. There. So, if I go like this, oh, no, that was a good size. <laughs> of course, I'm trying to show you an example, and it's not working. Yeah, see, these are all good shot. These, oh, it probably also doesn't help. Um, he has something that reduces his weapon spread, and I just realized I have that equipped. That also helps tremendously. But uh, yeah, the big thing, though, is if you look at his ammo, if I get, oh, it's not going to proc here. If he gets a headshot with a handgun um, on real targets, apparently, because it's not working here, he won't consume a shot. Um, here, I guess, because that's a training dummy, that really doesn't count, but, uh, there it is. The handgun will kill most things, especially depending on your hero power. It'll kill most things in one shot, and it's great for picking off things like, uh, the Marauders, or, you know, some of the beefier things like Berserkers, or especially Specials, in one hit. So, it also doesn't have drop-off, like the Longbow. So, Longbows have drop-off. I'm going to show you that right now. The longbow, which is much like the elven bows, um, you'll see that their reticle is a little bit different. You get a horizontal reticle, and then of course you have this weird, like metered sight, just kind of like on a well on a scope. And what you want to do is you do have to calculate for distance, right? So there, whoa, that was a bad shot. So if I pull here, that went a bit high. It looked like. Oh no, they're going wide. Fascinating. Oh, I noticed, do you notice his reticle? It's actually getting bigger over time. I didn't notice that. I don't use the longbow too much, but there you go. Looks like he is better at uh, snap firing this thing. Um, anyway, um, you'll want to calculate distance, and you'll want to arc just a little bit. So this is like slightly over his head. Wow, I'm doing horrible with this. Um, maybe it's worse with uh, Karelian. But you'll notice I'm like aiming at the top of his head and uh, his reticle is really bad. Bad example, I guess. But you do have to calculate vertical. There is a slight drop um, there. You'll you'll notice it there uh, because I'm shooting very far away. But there is a drop um, and you can also notice that he's got terrible reticle spread. He's got terrible spread with this weapon, especially after the zoom. Um, it's a powerful weapon. I'm just not a fan of it. The handgun, you don't have to worry about drop. And, uh, whoops, you don't have to worry about drop, and uh, does pretty consistent damage. In his Huntsman class, you don't have to worry about range. There's no range damage fall off, right? So, again, really good at taking things out and conserving ammo, because, again, he's taking back ammo per shot. So you can see here, range headshots recover one ammo. 
no damage fall off, like you just said. And he's got an aura around him, so all his party members also get an increased chance for critical strike, which can be nice, especially if they're stacking that critical strike heal temporary uh, health skill. Um, his career skill, which I've charged up, makes him vanish from sight. Um, one thing it does do is it gives him some critical striking ability. So when he does it, you'll see a poof. His vision, like uh, his zoom, will actually increase. T take a look at his hand in the right corner. And you'll see that it zooms in when he uses his skill. So there's a slight zoom in, and every hit he makes is a critical, right? So, bam, see the slight zoom in? And then... Those are all critical hits, basically. It will make a... you'll know the sound when you hear it. It just goes like, gadoo, gadoo, gadoo. But anyway, there you go. So, that's him with a, mar with a huntsman. Um, his talents... As before, you get some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, reload speed, pretty important if you're using a handgun. Um, range, weapon spread, I call this vital. If you're going to shoot targets at range, you're going to need that, period. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting forever for your reticle to snap. Um, extra stamina shield, great if you need to control, you know, crowd control, but that's kind of a weird thing. You'll need, you really kind of need that for a tankier class. Um, level 10, you have ammo regain on boss kill. Uh, critical hits cause enemies to take increased damage, and then hands off. Enemies that grab or pounce markers take double damage. And again, hands off, you'll see variations or iterations of this across different classes, but this is one of those skills where I'd rather prevent damage by getting a nice headshot and not having you pounce, rather than trying to mitigate damage already being taken. You're going for the perfect game, right? Or at least in my opinion. Um, for Make and Bleed, the way I view this one and the reason why I picked it is I'm going to be getting headshots on bosses because I'm going to be aiming for critical points. I might as well make my friends benefit from them, right? If I get a headshot, that means my teammates will be able to do better damage. Um, here, I've got Tall's Blessing, which will basically make him forever have ammo. Because if I'm killing things in one shot but getting two ammo per kill, I should be restoring ammo most of the time with some wiggle room for missed shots. Um, he also allows to get guaranteed critical hits, which could be pretty powerful. And also restore health. This I was torn between the uh, headshot two health thing versus Charles Blessing. Thing is here, two health is not a lot. Uh, especially at higher difficulties, you're going to have to get like 10 or 20 headshots to restore the damage from like one hit. So that's a lot of headshots. You know, and again, you kind of want to avoid being hit, not not mitigate the damage you've already taken. As before, um, crit kill temporary health and boss permanent health. And for his level 25s, his career skill, which makes him disappear and uh, do crits, he can reduce cooldown, you can recover health every 4 seconds, or a lot of health every second, which is pretty useful, and then, of course, a 20% power increase. For survivability reasons, I'm probably going to pick a Hunter's Respite here, because, uh, again, that is that is a lot of health that he can recover, so that's that's a good thing, especially if you're, you disappear and recover health, that's a pretty easy out, so... And for his next one, and I'm sorry you're going to see the same weapon combination again, you have again the Sword and the Shield. This is the Foot Knight, and again, I picked the Sword and Shield because I feel it is the most, um, it is the most versatile of his weapons. Um, I do also enjoy the two-handed hammer, and actually for a while I had him equipped with a two-handed hammer here, um, simply because its wide sweeping attacks are really good at just clearing enemies around you. Literally, if you spin with your move like that, you can clear a good 180. Um, it'll hit everyone it touches until it hits something too beefy, like a Berserker or a Marauder or Chaos Warrior. And then the overhead swings are relatively quick for a lot of AP damage. So those first two swings, very good at getting rid of storm vermin, tearing down shields, and basically getting rid of stubborn foes, right? So a very good crowd control, um, very good damage. Um, again, the only problem here is the stamina. If you lose that stamina and, I don't know, maybe I like to tank a lot. That's just the way I am. So I have him with a sword and shield for his ranged... I've given him the blunderbuss. Uh, I could have given him the repeater, but the blunderbuss at short ranges is really good at taking things out. Um, good enough that you can also quickly do a weapon swap and shoot things. So things where, like, say I'm fighting a storm vermin with a shield, or maybe a stubborn marauder with a shield, or an unarmored marauder, all those things that can be taken down with one shot. With a shield, though, you have to get the shield out of the way. So the best thing to do is... Do a shove, swipe, and fire. 
Um, that was a bit messy that time, but you caught the idea, right? Um, do an attack, swap, fire. And so the first attack knocks a shield out of the way, and the second attack kills him. So that short range burst damage gets rid of things really quickly. Also, in a jam, since you do have that reload, your right or your charge button, your right click, is going to give you a nice uh, sweep attack. This does shove a bit in front of you. It's like a replacement shove that doesn't cost stamina. So that's kind of nice. Um, as for talents, um, so his passive ability, as you can see there, he grants a damage resistant buff to all everyone around him. So that's always good. This is why I keep the foot knight for him when I go solo. So if I do take damage, it's mitigated. I know I don't like doing that, but you never know, right? He also has increased stamina, so he can tank more. And he does take reduced damage, and that's the main reason why I have it. It's for survivability for Marcus, because, frankly, none of the other classes really... He, he, since the bot doesn't use active skills, this has the best passives, so that's why I pick it. His active lets him charge, which is fantastic. The charge does a couple things. One, um, it'll bowl over anyone in front of you in a straight line, and land about here, right? Um, so if someone swamped or they just went down, you can quickly recover them by charging through them and then picking them up while holding shield, of course, right? So they'll clear the way, you can pick them up, and you've saved the day. Um, alternatively, you can charge into bosses, uh, chaos warriors, or whatever. You can actually knock them down. So you see that troll about to spit? Hit it in the face, and it stops its attack, right? That chaos one about to grab someone? Hit it in the face with that charge, and he'll drop. He'll uh, he'll not finish his swing. It's great for interrupting bosses or for just moving really quick. Note that there's a wind-up time for it. Like, I press the button now, there's a second, and then he rushes. You can also cancel it with block. So if I don't want to go all the way, because maybe there's a, a cliff somewhere, say I want to just do a quick short charge, or if I want to stop in a particular area, like if I normally charge here, I go all the way, but you can hit block and you'll stop. Um, you don't have to go through people to knock them down. You actually knock them down in front of you. So, like, if I hit the stop button right around here, eh, actually, right around here, this guy would be knocked down, but I would not I would not keep on moving forward. So it's, it's a good way to kind of gauge... Whoops, I canceled that way too early. It's a good way to... Um, also, pos reposition yourself in a jam. So it's it's a good skill. It's a fun skill. Barden. Barden is by far my favorite character and probably going to be the first once the release is coming, which tomorrow, so excited. Um, he's my favorite character going to get him to 25 as soon as possible. I have him here stacked as Ranger. With Ranger, I'm giving him the two-handed axe, tried and true, as well as the handgun. So the handgun, for the same reasons as Kruber, right? It's a good single-target damage. Your main concern here is to make sure that you're waiting for that reticle to snap. Also, do you notice I missed there, despite... There you go. Um, I wonder if it spreads back up. Nope, doesn't. Stay snapped. So... One thing I notice, and I probably should have said this with Marcus too, notice that when I crouch, the reticle opens up. So unlike most games where you want to ch to crouch to reduce your reticle, you want to stay standing with the handguns. Um, it's going to snap your reticle far sharper, plus it'll give you a better view over things like fences and whatnot. So same reason with Gruber, it's a one hit kill, four headshots, and it's easy to get headshots, and it's pretty accurate. Um, as a bot too, um, he's going to be using this a lot. So you'll want him to, you'll want to give him this or the Grudge Raker simply for maximum damage uh, and getting rid of specials, right? Um, he gets double ammo, which is nice, just like most of the ranged classes. Um, and here his passives are that are great actually. He drops ammo pa pickups uh, when specials are killed. So those sorcerers, hook rats, etc., assassin rats, they die, they drop an ammo pack, right? He gets a double ammo capacity, like I said, and he has increased reload speed. One thing to note that you probably didn't see there is um, that he doesn't have range damage fall off, which is interesting. So you'll note there, 4175, but if I move closer, that was about... <laughs> maybe 4175 is the highest. 4500. So if I'm really far away, I'm not going to be doing as much damage as I could be if I was closer, which is kind of a shame, really. Um, there is 
the handgun doesn't have a lot of fall off. Something like the grudge rigger was going to be like nil at certain ranges, right? So just bear that in mind that he doesn't have that uh, no range damage fall off that a lot of the other range classes do. His career skill is kind of a disappointment, to be perfectly honest. He drops a smoke bomb, which is highly visible to all your teammates. It kind of makes everybody stagger a bit, and then you turn invisible. But unlike some of the other area of effect interrupts that the other classes do, his doesn't do anything else. Here you go, you're invisible. You run away. That's it. No regen, no fancy, you know, like, backstabbing damage, no ammo regen, no teleporting, nothing. It's kind of a disappointment. Great for running away, or just kind of escaping unnoticed. So why the two-handed axe? Well, like Kruber's two-handed hammer, or like Barden's two-handed hammer, this is really great at wide sweeping attacks and crowd control, as well as getting rid of shields and headshots. The other thing, too, is that, unlike the two-handed hammer, this seems to do a little bit more damage, i.e., while the two-handed... It sacrifices some of the sweeping ability with actual killing power. So unlike the two-handed hammer where you're getting most of your killing power with an overhand, this thing will hit less targets, but most of those targets are going to be kills when it hits. So for the bot, that gives him a little flexibility for armored again and sweeping targets. And uh, with the handgun, that's his real primary there. That's what he's going to be killing a lot of his stuff with. Um, one thing I did for him, though, specifically is around his talents. And his talents, as you can see here, have reduced range spread, critical, like I said, for the handguns or range shooting. Um, again, you see here he's got increased effects of healing, uh, increased attack speed, also a good choice. For his level 10s, you have Last Resort, which is a 50% power increase when out of ammunition, which could be a fun way to run this build, especially if you're running something like the Grudge Rigger where you have very limited ammo. Um, no dawdling, so uh, I've got increased movement speed, which is helpful when he's not tanking. And curl up, which is a uh, damage mitigation skill for when you're grabbed or pounced. Again, you know my thoughts on that. He's level 15, so what he shares. These are very important. <laughs> very, very important. You've got Battle Brew. So instead of ammo dropping in a special kill, he has a 25% chance of getting a healing draft instead. Yes. That means you can spam healing drafts in higher difficulties, which is very good at clearing, well, anything. I mean, you know, if you're playing the game, you know what that means. Um, he also can change it so that it increases the amount of ammunition. The amount of ammunition you get is dependent on how much maximum ammo you carry. The more maximum ammo, the more you get from a drop. Uh, for Barden, it's typically like two handgun shots per um, drop. Master Brewer, um, survivalist, grants a potion instead of Ammunition 1 and 3, and so that's going to be something like strength, speed, you know, etc., those potion buffs. Obviously, Battle Brew is going to be there for survivability. And because the passives are maintained by the bots, that means when I'm playing solo, he'll be spawning lots of goodies for me as I play, thus keeping me alive. His level 20s, just like everybody else, you have your crits and your uh, bosses die health trick, and then... Here, at 25, it finally makes his distance gauge skill a little bit useful. Here, you're increasing the stealth, which, useless, um, <laughs> depending. Here, you're increasing the cooldown, maybe, and then here, you're recovering 20 health. This always struck me as strange, because Kruber gets 4 health a second, and he stays around for, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds. It's like, this is half as strong as Kruber's. I don't... I think he got the shaft on his active skill. For what it's worth... His passive skill is incredible. So, next class we've got is the Iron Breaker. And the Iron Breaker is, um, again, that's my favorite class. It's built to tank. Um, give me one second, I have a feeling Ty's gonna try to invite me for a second. <laughs> so, don't mind that. Um, oh, did I crash it? Hope not. Huh. Well, it looks like uh, we're going to have to hold for a second. Let me splice in. Uh, let me uh, crash out and come back in. Looks like this crashed for a bit. So, see you guys on the flip side.